Would you ask to go to space before you would train properly? No. If you were some kind of mechanical worker, would you want to drive the heavy crane stuff before you were trained? No. So I'm in the board a hole here. I'm talking about my hair. Most people think I say I'm bored, which is on me, really. I need to enunciate more, but I don't. Why would I be sat here being really bored? That doesn't seem like a very smart thing to do. Please do excuse my voice as well. I had a weekend full of wrestling bookings. And as you can hear, I've just completely lost it. Because of course, when you get in a ring, you go, Rari Mara. But that kind of ties into today's video. Because we are going to talk about speech. Or 10 things you ain't ever going to hear when you go to the flipping gym. Number 10 is, could you please let me know when you're finished with that machine? Because that's not what happens in the Fitness Palace of Love, aka the gym. What happens in the Fitness Palace of Love, aka the gym, is you will be using a piece of equipment and somebody will come up to you and they'll go how many sets have you got left now one when this happens even when you're resting it's a bit like why don't you just say get off the machine but also two it gets so much worse when this person asks you mid set and you've got headphones on it's like do you expect me to read your lips while i'm trying to have an intense workout here and also what is the answer you want to have you want to hear zero Done. Nada. I'm finished. And now this wonderful piece of lifting apparatus is for you. This is why it annoys me so much. I totally understand it's a pet peeve of mine. If you want to do it and you do it politely, what's wrong with that? But no one does it politely. Everyone is basically saying, I'm now going to try and intimidate and pressurize you off this machine. And as you can see, it drives me absolutely bonkers. Just wait till I leave and then be like everybody else and treat it like a zoo when you all run over to that piece of equipment because you want to use it first. Number nine is I'm so happy the gym is rammed. It's all gyms are rammed. I used to go to a gym that was so oversubscribed because of course the owners wanted to make as much money as possible. It was like a nightclub and you had to queue up to use certain pieces of kit. Surprise, surprise, it only lasted a few weeks and I was like, you know what, I'm going to pay more money for the more expensive gym that doesn't let this many people in. But how good does it feel? We've talked about this in other videos. How good does it feel once you're associated with the gym and you're comfortable with the gym and you go in and it's just empty? So you just want to put your arms out and go, ah, sounds like the Halo theme. But it's just the greatest feeling in the world. An empty gym, it's like all your dreams and wishes have come true, which means, you know, you've really lowered the bar in your old age because not many kids are going, one day I hope I grow up and there's an empty gym. But that's life. Sometimes it stems right on your head. Number eight is I'm loving how clean the shower is. Gym showers just aren't clean. They're really unhygienic, they're really dirty, and I swear, people have that checklist when it goes, oh, the shower was checked an hour ago. I think somebody goes in there, looks left, looks right, and then just ticks it and runs out of there again. I would never use the shower in the gym, and if I were you, which I'm not because then you wouldn't be doing it, because I would you, you shouldn't be doing it either. Number seven is, I think I'll lower the weight and concentrate on form. Nobody concentrates on form. Nobody, not true, a few people do, but most people in the gym, fitness pass of love, what they want to do is lift heavy weights. And now you should be striving to lift heavier weights, because of course that's a great barometer to know that you're getting stronger and probably getting bigger. But if you can't handle the weight and you can't do it with the proper form, I'm not talking about when you cheat a little bit, I'm talking about the point you're putting your health on the line. Why are you doing this? Where else in life would you do this? If you were an astronaut, would you ask to go to space before you would train properly? No. If you were some kind of mechanical worker, would you want to drive the heavy crane stuff before you were trained? No. People can die in that scenario, and people, very, very rarely, could die in a similar gym scenario as well. Imagine you are benching too much, and you drop the barbell, and it crushed your larynx. Now, it's probably not going to kill you, but I bet it sends you to hospital. Just don't do it. Work your way up there slowly. There's no rush. There's no magical demon on your ass going, if you don't lift 700 kilograms today, I'm going to kill you. And if that is happening, you need to go and see a doctor because that is not a realistic scenario you're making it up in your head ego lifting is pointless it's not helping you and it's certainly not helping anybody else when you pick up a bar and do like i say a one inch lift that's stupid number six is do you want vegetables with that why would you hear that in the gym you ain't eating number five is i shall work legs today nobody likes working legs nobody and there's always that one guy in the comments go, I like working legs. And actually, good for you, man. You're living the absolute dream. But deep down, we want to work on our biceps. We want to work on our triceps. We want to work on our chest. And we want to work on our back. And sometimes our shoulders and our abs. Because these are the vanity muscles. Everyone wants vanity muscles because you want to whip your top off and show your workouts on Instagram. And if you show off a quad, people just go, yeah, well, where's your delt? But you've got to train legs because not only is it going to make you look bigger overall, but it will send out a little bit of testosterone around your body, which will help your upper body too. So don't skip on legs. I know it hurts. And I know you have to train them three, four, five, six times as hard as everything else. Because again, you are holding your body up constantly throughout the day. So think how much ass kicking they're already taking. And then you've got to find a way to kick their ass anymore. But just do it and do it hard. You've got to hurt your legs in the proper way. Number four is I hate working my arms. Ties into the last one. 
Sometimes you see gym bros go into the gym and they'll just get a Friday night pump on. And a Friday night pump consists of doing some press-ups so your chest looks all right, smashing out some bicep curls, and then doing something on their triceps. But most gym bros haven't actually figured out that your tricep is more important than your bicep if you want a big arm. Because obviously tri means three and bi means two, so you have more muscles in your tricep. Everyone just loves arm workouts. They love them. And you should be doing arm workouts. But again, it ties into what I just said. Every single muscle is important if you want a half-decent physique. Number three is I shall leave you to your workout in peace. It basically ties into number 10, but I want to talk about it again. Because everybody is just walking around getting in everybody else's way. Because they feel like the gym is their HQ. And if somebody else is, again, stopping them from doing it, they feel they need to make a song and dance about it. And there's nothing worse, and now I'm going to be the guy making a song and dance about it. It's what a hypocrite I am. But that one guy that is using every single piece of equipment in the gym, and you try to use it, and from the other side of the gym, they tell you not to use it. It's like, well, what do you want me to do? Do I just sit here until you leave? I didn't know that Brian was allowed to have top dibs and priority on every single thing in here. We should all be allowed to work out in peace, because the stress, or the intensity, I should say, is coming from within, like He-Man. That's when it should be going down, not on this other poppy cop. And yet I have gone to many gyms over my many years on this planet, and yet it has happened every single damn time, or at least every single damn week. The point is, it doesn't go away. Number two is, can you help me with my form? Nobody asked that. Nobody wants help with their form. Once more, they want help with their heavy divvy lift. Why wouldn't you ask someone to spot you to ensure that your form is good? As opposed to, well, I know I'm going to struggle with this bench on half a rep. <laughs> So rather than take some weight off the bar, I'm going to go ask somebody for help. That's just crazy to me. You may as well go up to somebody in the street and say, can you just stab me right in the face? I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know where that came from. The point I'm trying to make here in a very roundabout way is form. I'm not going to say it's more important than strength, but you want both of them to be working in tandem. And of course, you can't overdo your form. <laughs> what does that even mean? But you can overdo your lift. So just don't. Number one is I love the way I look. And I think this actually may go for across the board. I'm sure there would be a couple of exceptions, right? People that actually do have the self-confidence and the self-awareness to understand what fitness actually is. But even the dudes that are posing in the gym all the time, they're only doing it because they haven't got a lot of self-confidence. They're trying to G themselves up, right? I know that's how I feel. It's a dangling carrot. You're always searching for something else, searching for something else. And even on the days where you do wake up and look in the mirror and think, oh man, I look pretty good today. It takes about an hour. And then you like, I don't know, drink some water. You go, oh, look, I'm bloated. I look terrible. Or the worst one is when you do get that post-gym pump, you're like, there it is. That's how I want to look all the time. And then by the time you get home, it's almost like your muscles ran away. And you like ring the police and putting out a missing persons report. But that's just something I think we all need to work on. And hopefully hearing other people say it will help you deal with it as well. Body dysmorphia or whatever the word we're going to use is bigorexia. That's another one. Of course, it can get to the extremes where you do need to go get psychological help. Of course it can. It's a real disease. It's a mental health problem. But I think we're all dealing with it on actually a copable level a uh, capable level, whatever the right word would be, most of the time. Because again, you're always trying to chase the thing that you don't have. So even if your goal was to look like Brad Pitt in Fight Club, or you get to Brad Pitt in Fight Club, but then you think, well, maybe I can add a little bit here and I can add a little bit there. But it's not necessarily a bad thing, again, as long as you are self-aware enough to accept it. Because that can act as a wonderful piece of inspiration, a wonderful piece of motivation, as long as you're always reminding yourself, like I say, that you're doing this to enjoy yourself, to make yourself feel good, and just to be healthy. That's the thing I always say. What's the most important word in health and fitness? Health. Because without anything else, you can't do much without your health. And that goes for life too. So remind yourself that even these people you see on Instagram probably aren't overly happy with their physiques. And maybe that's why they're putting that out there on social media as well. Because they want that heart. They want that like. They want that comment. And they want to feel good about it. And there is nothing wrong with that as long as you know that it is not shallow in a bad way. But it's not going to give you the happiness you need deep down. And that comes from other areas of your life. Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know what other crazy things you never hear in the gym. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the bell, ding, dings. So you know what other videos are going live. There is another video on the screen right now. Please do give it a click. Otherwise, come support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. I'm in Greg Doucette's Power 13 cookbook. All the information in the description below, as well as a code to get 15% off. Instagram and Twitter at SimonMeller316 as well. Simon.bigcartel.com for merch. Otherwise, I just appreciate you being here. I appreciate seeing your face. And I'll see you on the next one.